When you are off-roading out on the trail for the day, having the essential gear is important for not only safety, but for comfort. And over the years, I've added things to my Jeep that I thought I needed, and I've gotten rid of stuff that I didn't use. And now I have five Jeeps in my driveway, but I don't have five pieces of every single piece of gear. So I've had to make a checklist to make sure that when I head out in whatever vehicle, I'm taking the right gear. And so today, that's what we're gonna talk about, the stuff that I carry with me when I hit the trail in 2020. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And today we get to do something that I really love doing and that's talking about gear. And this is all the gear that I take with me when I hit the trail for a day trip. We're not talking about multi-day trips and camping gear. This is just the essential stuff that I take with me. And I've you know mixed and matched and swapped things out over the years. And I think talking about all this stuff will give you some great ideas about what you need to have with you when you hit the trail. Maybe some of this gear is right for you, maybe some of it isn't. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Now I've broken this down into kind of four categories on my little checklist and yes I made a checklist, a little OCD in me, but we're talking about safety gear which First and foremost, that should be essential in every vehicle, not just off-roading. We're gonna talk about tools, we're gonna to talk about recovery, and then just some of the necessities that I think you need to have when you go hit the trail. So I've got a lot of gear here we're gonna talk about more than it's on this table. Let's start by talking about the safety gear first. So being a retired Navy corpsman, first aid and safety are always top of mind for me because you know, look, we are out off-roading and there are certain dangers. I've seen vehicles roll over on an easy hill. Uh, I've seen people injured that was unexpected. You never know when something's gonna happen out there and you wanna make sure that you're prepared. So everything right here on the table is stuff that I recommend every single vehicle has. Now, unlike some of the other categories we're gonna talk about here later, you know, not every vehicle that you're with needs to carry a high lift jack or a shovel. You can conquer and divide. Hey, you carry that, I'll carry this, and that works out pretty well. Unless you're going out by yourself, which does happen, but every vehicle needs to have all of this first aid gear. Safety equipment. See, first aid is top of mind. Let's talk about that first. So I do have a first aid kit in every vehicle. This is the one that I take with me most of the time for day trips. I do have a larger trauma bag that I will take with me if we're gonna do multi-day trips. But this bag here is a, it's a Blue Ridge Overland bag. I like this because it opens up, it's nice and large. And then it's got these little pockets in here, which are great because you can just pull out the pocket if you just need you know, a section of medicine or you just need one that's got band-aids. It's a great little bag, it's perfect for day use. Um, but look, you need to have some basic first aid training. I have quite a bit of a, uh, advanced first aid stuff in here, so maybe a little more compact and smaller, one that's practical. The important thing is, Whatever first aid kit you have, open it up, see what's in there, and make sure you know how to use it, okay? Good to go. First aid kit, got, every vehicle's gotta have it. Every vehicle needs to have a fire extinguisher, and you can debate all day long on what size fire extinguisher, but just having at least one where you can put out a fire is really important. The other important piece is you need to make sure that you can get access to this quickly in an emergency. I can't tell you how important it is when we've pulled over and somebody was on fire to be able to grab this quickly and run out there and extinguish the fire. Boy, that can make a huge difference. So have a fire extinguisher, make sure it's fully charged and make sure you can access it somewhere quickly. So first aid kit, fire extinguisher, top two hands down. Now is one that I've talked about on the channel before um, and it is really important and it doesn't seem very important until you need it and that is a seatbelt cutter. And so I've probably witnessed four rollovers in the last several years and the one where we had to extract somebody, the vehicle was laying upside down and there was fuel leaking out of the vehicle and they couldn't get out of the vehicle because the seat belts had locked up and we just couldn't get them out. Now this is many years ago and I didn't have a seatbelt cutter with me and so this was a big lesson learned. I used a knife because that's all I had to cut the seatbelt. Now the problem with that is when you're hanging upside down in the vehicle and you cut the seatbelt with a knife, that knife now becomes a little bit of a danger because if they were to fall, you could cut themselves or whatever. We had to do what we had to do, but it made me realize very quickly that every vehicle needs to have a seatbelt cutter and you need to be able to get access to this pretty quickly. So uh, look, they're cheap, 
and they're easy insurance, so make sure you have a seatbelt cutter. Okay, uh, a light. I think a light is important. I like a headlamp to carry with me in the vehicle just because that gives me hands free, but just a basic flashlight is good enough. But you need to have some type of lighting. You know, when you get out in the dark or something breaks, you gotta get up in a spot and check it out, whatever. Um, you never know, and if you, somebody's hurt and it's nighttime, you need to be able to see what's going on. So you need to have some type of lighting with you. A whistle, this is just the old camper hiker in me. Uh, I still carry a whistle because I don't know, maybe I roll off the side of the road somewhere and nobody can see me. At least I can sit there and blow a whistle and maybe folks will hear me. So I do carry a whistle with me. I think that's good safety insurance to have. And then some good warmth. Uh, I've got some extra clothes, whether it's a jacket or a sweatshirt. I carry a lighter in case I need to start a fire. If I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm stranded, I can start a fire. And then having one of these emergency mylar blankets. These things are really nice. And uh, just a little side tip here, we've discovered recently that if you are camping and it is 20 degrees outside, it's really cold at night, you can actually open this up, put it on the top side of your rooftop tent, or you can do it on a ground tent, just kind of pin it up there, and it actually reflects the heat back down on you, uh, and you'll stay much, much warmer. These things, they're thin, and they're very, very efficient in keeping you warm. But look, we go out to the desert all the time, and when that sun goes down, it gets cold out in the desert. And even in the summertime in the mountains, it can get chilly out there. So we may start the day in shorts, t-shirts, flip-flops, now, well, you shouldn't be wearing flip-flops when you're off-roading, but you know what I'm talking about, shorts and t-shirts, uh, having some warmth when that sun goes down, especially if you get stuck somewhere is important. So, okay, there you go. That's my safety gear. Let's jump into recovery. Now, the next category on my list is recovery gear, and having recovery gear out on the trail is super important. Uh, now, if you are with somebody else, it's helpful because that's actually the best recovery piece of gear to have is another person in another vehicle. But sometimes you're gonna be out by yourself and you need to self-recover, or maybe you're out by yourself and you come across somebody that's stuck. That's usually when I'm using most of my recovery gear is because I come across somebody else that's stuck. So we'll talk about a few things, but the first thing I wanna talk about, we're gonna go a little strange order here, is a shovel. Now a shovel is not the most important gear, but I did mention in the beginning that there are things I used to carry that I don't carry anymore. And while I can't carried this cool shovel for several years. It's pretty cool, it's red, it's got these spikes on it, it looks great, and I never used it. The only time I used this thing was to shovel a little bit of dirt to put out the fire at the end of the night at camp. So uh, I actually got rid of this shovel and replaced it for a much more compact and practical foldable shovel. This is an e-tool, some of you guys will know if you've been in the military, but these things are great. Um, look, it's not gonna shovel as much dirt or sand as the other one, so I'll be working a little bit harder if my vehicle gets stuck and I gotta dig myself out of a situation, but it works well, it's compact, and for as often as I use a shovel, this actually works well for me because I rarely, rarely use a shovel. Again, putting out campfires. Okay, what is though, however, the number one piece of recovery gear you should have? Well, that's a winch, a good winch that's capable of pulling out your vehicle. It's gotta have this, the right weight rating and you need to know how to use it. Now that's a key factor because I've come across many people that they put a winch on their vehicle and they've never used it before. So I'll tell you this, put your winch on your vehicle, go out to some dirt road somewhere, hook yourself up to a tree and use your winch. Get used to how it works because the first time that you need it, you don't wanna be fumbling around. And whether it's a cable or synthetic line, just make sure that it's in good working order. You know, if you have synthetic line every year, you should pull that out, clean it, use it, that kind of stuff. Uh, if you've used your winch, you know, you need to come home and make sure it's all squared away. There's a whole, could talk about winches for a long time, but you need to have a good winch. Uh, the other thing that I will say is I have switched to soft shackles. I don't carry D-rings anymore, which are the metal rings. I only use these soft shackles. They're super easy to use, they're very convenient, and in my opinion, they're safer. Uh, they're definitely strong enough to do the job to pull a vehicle out, but if something breaks, if a line snaps, I would much rather have one of these flinging around than a big heavy metal D-ring, so I prefer to carry soft shackles. Now, I only carry this toe strap, and this toe strap is 
well, well used. It's actually been used mostly to pull other people out. I, don't, I actually don't know if I've used this to pull myself out, maybe once or twice. Uh, it's probably due to re be replaced just because it's a little old and it probably has been used a few too many times and it's getting kind of dirty. So I'm probably gonna replace this here soon. But what I like about this toe strap is it's good and thick. And so I don't like the thin ones because if you need to wrap around a tree, a nice thick one works really well. You could carry a separate tree hugger, and I used to do that, but what I found is the tree hugger was only an inch thicker than this thing. This thing's pretty thick, wrapped it around trees before, didn't damage the bark. Uh, I think that's perfect. The next thing that I have, and this thing is kind of bulky and heavy, but a snatch block is something that you're gonna to wanna to have. And so why do you need a snatch block? Well, when you are winching in a situation where you are just really stuck, like in the mud or in the sand, and that winch just can't pull you out, what you can do is you can wrap that winch line around this snatch block, bring it back to you or to another point or to another vehicle, and it will actually double your strength. So you can pull more using one of these. And you can actually use multiple of these and continue to add more strength to your pulling capability. Having a snatch block, boy, it's big, it's bulky, but you will want this when the time comes. You'll be thankful you carried it with you. And then of course, uh, carry gloves. Now you can carry gloves with recovery, carry gloves with your tools. Just have a good set of gloves that you can access to. Uh, you wanna make sure you protect your hands. You don't wanna get injured when you're doing all this kind of stuff. So. Look, there is a lot of great recovery gear out there and I'm not knocking any of it. I'm just telling you every day when I go out on the trail, this is what's in my Jeep and this is the stuff that I need the most and so that's why I bring it with me, it's working for me. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about tools and I love tools. I could talk about tools all day, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna briefly brush over the stuff that I'm carrying with me. And let me just start with my tool bag, which, man, I love this tool bag. It probably gets used almost every time we hit the trail. And this thing has taken a beating. It's been thrown around in the dirt and the dust, desert and the rocks, and it is holding up really well. It looks a little worse for the wear, but I did a full video a while back where I talked about every little thing that's in this tool bag. And so I will leave a link down below if you wanna go check out that video. But what's important is that you have some type of tool system because you don't know when you're gonna break down and you're gonna to need to fix something. And having the tools to do that could mean the difference between you fixing it and driving out or having to walk out and get help. So having a tool bag where you've got some basic hand tools, some wrenches, some socket sets, some screwdrivers, a hammer, and then just a couple other little things like duct tape, uh, bailing wire, zip ties, some JB Weld, just some fix-it stuff in here to help get you home. Uh, that can be super helpful. And I love this tool bag. Have I mentioned that? Okay, uh, let's talk about some other tools that you need to have. One is not on the table here, and that is a spare tire. And I know there are a handful of you out there that prefer not to bring a spare tire because you don't want that added weight. And that's fine, I get that. Having uh, a tire repair kit can be your next best friend. And I carry one of these, but I prefer to have a spare tire. And that way, if I get a flat, then I can just swap it out and I don't have to worry about fixing it. And then I'll just keep that in case I get another flat, which hasn't happened to date, which is pretty nice. Now, when I do get a flat tire, how am I gonna raise my lifted Jeep up that's got big old tires? Well, I used to carry a high lift jack with me and I never used that thing. Uh, it's great, high lift jacks have a lot of purpose for recovery and for lifting a, a big vehicle that's already lifted but I never used it. What I found is I just prefer a bottle jack and I have this little safe jack here, which is really nice. It's compact, it's a little heavy, but it has a pretty cool base so it doesn't sink down into the sand. And then it's got some extensions here that you can decide you know, what fits best if you're gonna put it under the axle or if you need to raise the actual body of the vehicle up. Works really well, I like having a bottle jack. The other thing that I have, and I've had this for a long time, is this little AEV jack stand. And this works great for the Jeep jack. It actually fits right in this little hole and it raises up the jack four inches. So it allows you to use your stock jack on a lifted vehicle. It's only gonna add four inches, but it should be enough, for example, for my wife's Jeep, this would work perfectly. Also, what I like about this thing is it doubles as a wheel chock, so you can put this on a wheel and secure the vehicle and keep it from rolling around. Very nice little piece of gear. It's, it's not heavy, it does take up a little bit of space. Uh, okay, so 
we've replaced the tire, or we need to air up, air down, whatever it is, I have some Coyote tire deflators so I can air down if I'm in the sand and I gotta get out somewhere, or I just want a little more comfortable ride, a little more grip. Having a way to air down is important. And then I have a full system here uh, where I can air up and I use either CO2 or air. Sometimes I will take both of these with me. It depends on what vehicle. Now, I usually have CO2 and I like CO2 because it allows me to inflate all my tires quickly, get back on the road and go, or if we need to reset a bead, super easy to do with that. Uh, my wife's vehicle, my son's, they don't have CO2 on board. And so usually what we'll do is we'll, I'll bring the ARB air compressor and they can fill up using that while I'm using CO2. Or if I forgot to run and go get this filled before I hit the trail, then I will just take the air compressor. So that's how I'm dealing with my tires. Uh, a couple other things here. One, uh, a ratchet strap. Everybody should have a couple ratchet straps. I can't tell you how many times we have fixed something on the trail or secured something on the trail and having a ratchet strap can be super important. And then having some basic fluids when you're out there. What I have in here is a couple quarts of oil, some power steering fluid, some brake fluid, and then some brake cleaner. And I keep them in this ammo can, which has a nice seal on them, so nothing's gonna leak. Uh, I don't carry a big thing of fluids. I mean, you could bring out antifreeze and all that other kind of stuff. This is just the stuff that I take with me. Just having some essential basic gear is gonna help you get home when you have a breakdown. And the last category we're going to talk about is what I consider just some of the necessities, things that you need to have that didn't fall into those other areas. Now, first and foremost are communications. Now, communications could go into the um, safety area if you wanted to throw that in there, but you need to have a way to communicate, whether it's people that are in your convoy or if you need to reach out and touch somebody. Now, I do have a ham radio installed in my Jeep Wrangler, uh, and I do have my ham license. Uh, I do have a mobile ham radio, so if I'm in one of my other vehicles, I can still use that. I do have frequencies in here that I use commonly, also some of the repeaters, plus there's VHF channels on the rugged radio, which is nice. Uh, this is a good little radio. The battery life on it will last more than 24 hours, which is pretty good. Uh, GRMRS is good. If I'm going out with folks that only have GRMS capabilities, these are good little radios. And then a CB. Almost everybody has a CB, and so you got to have a CB with you. Now, it will depend on who I'm going with or where I go on, depending on which one of these radios I take with me, but I do have them all. Uh, the other communication tool I have is this little Garmin inReach. And I used to have the Spot X, which was really nice because it allowed my wife to find me in certain areas where I was off the grid a little bit and we could text back and forth, but it wasn't the best system. I really like the inReach. Uh, it's super easy to use. The battery life on this is really good. It syncs with my phone, so it makes texting my wife back and forth and getting notifications really easy. Uh, I highly recommend these. They are a little expensive and you do have a, to pay a monthly uh, premium for it, but I think they're worth it. So something to consider. Also, uh, where are you going and how are you getting there? Well, you need to have some kind of trail map, uh, whether it's a guidebook or a local map from the ranger station. I like going by the ranger station and seeing what they have. Uh, sometimes they'll have some cool maps that talks about some campsites or some cool trails that maybe I didn't know about. Plus, it just gives you an opportunity to talk with the ranger. So having a hard map is a good idea. Electronic navigation is a great tool. I use this often and people always ask me what I'm using and this is Gaia. Uh, it's a great little way to record your route. You can upload routes and you can see all kinds of different map overlays. So just having that is very important. And then of course you need to make sure you have the old trusty compass just so you can find your way out if all else fails. At least I'm going in the right direction. So there you go, there's that. Uh, a knife, a knife should be an everyday carry, not just in a vehicle, but just an everyday carry in your pocket. Uh, having a good knife can be uh, very essential, probably one of the best tools you can have. One other tool that I didn't mention earlier, um, is a little saw. This is a little, little wire saw and uh, you don't ever know when you're going to need a wire saw just to kind of cut a little piece of wood. Maybe you need to get some kindling going for a fire at, at night or you need to, you know, make a big poker to fight off a bear. I don't know, whatever. I just carry it. It's small. It's compact. It's simple enough. Uh, that's that. Uh, food and water. Duh, right? You need to take some water. You need to take some food. Uh, nuts are great if you're only going to be out for a couple hours just to have those. Maybe you won't eat them, but you'll have them if you need them. And then a good rule of thumb for water is one gallon per person per day. And so having enough water is super important. And then uh, the last thing here is, oh, two more things. I'm sorry. 
trash bag. Pack out what you pack in. You need to bring trash bags so you can secure your trash. Plus, you don't want to have food or junk or whatever and then just try to figure out where you're going to put it. Bring some trash bags. Plus, you can pick up some extra trash when you're out on the trail and put it in here and throw it away when you get home. Okay, I, and the last thing, and I get scolded for this from time to time. Guys, if you're taking your wife out or your girlfriend or whatever, don't forget the toilet paper. She'll thank you for it. So there you go. That is what I take with me when I'm out on the trail. It seems like a whole lot of stuff, but over the years I've realized there are certain things I just have to have when I go. I like to be prepared. Is it overkill? Maybe it's overkill. Did I forget something? Well, I would like to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know if there's something that I'm not taking that I should take that you like taking with you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.